So you want to make rugs like these, but you don't know where to start. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some of the basic um, tools that I use to make my rugs. I'm also gonna break it down with absolute necessities versus some niceties to make things easier. All right, so I got kind of everything I use laid out here on the table. Very first thing you need is your hat. Can't be making rugs without your hat now. The bare necessities are four items. Four. Did I say four? I meant five. Five. There's five items. First thing, tufting gun. Second thing, primary tufting fabric, monk's cloth, whatever. Cloth. Yarn. Frame. Glue. Tufting gun. Cloth. Yarn. Frame. Glue! The number one thing you need to make rugs is a tufting gun. All right, this is by far my favorite. Um, it's an AK-1 cut pile. Now there's many different models that you can get. Um, like I said, this is my favorite. This is an original AK-1. It's a really good machine. I still keep it as a backup. And then this was an Amazon knockoff that I bought to try out. Um, wasn't the greatest. Um, it came in broken. Luckily, I was able to fix it. The trigger was stuck. I do have a video on how to fix that trigger if it comes along. All right, the next thing you need is primary tufting cloth. Now this cloth is actually interwoven in a specific manner for tufting rugs. Now there's different kinds of stuff you can use. You can use burlap, primary tufting cloth, is, which is what I use. Um, and then there's also what's called monk's cloth. Um, monk's cloth stretches a little too much for me while I'm actually working, so I stick to the primary tufting cloth. Now you can get it on Amazon. Um, there's lots of different places that sell it. All right, that was one. This is two. Now we're on the three. Okay, you need yarn. Biggest thing with yarn is you're trying to match the colors of the design or the image that you're trying to make. Now, you may need a little bit of yarn or you may need a lot of yarn. It just depends. It's important to remember not to limit yourself to one brand of yarn. Not every brand of yarn makes all the colors that you need. Now, there's different types of yarn you can buy, different weights, different colors, glitter involved. I think there's some glow in the dark stuff out there too. But for me, worsted, 100% acrylic, Size number four yarn works the best. All right, item number four that you need is a frame. All right, this is what holds up your cloth so that way you can get to work tufting your, tufting your rugs. You have many different options with your frame. You can build your own, you can buy a pre-assembled one. It's just up to you. A big ticket of advice though, is make sure whatever frame that you build will actually fit the cloth that you buy. Let's say you go build a four foot by four foot frame but your cloth is only, you know, three foot by, you know, 100 feet, well, that cloth isn't gonna fit your frame. All right, so say it again with me. Gun, cloth, yarn, frame, glue! This is essentially what holds all your yarn in place on your fabric. Now, there's lots of debates on the different types of glue to use, um, what brand's the best, what level of glue you, that you use, but this is what I use, all right? so. It's Robert 6700, it's available at the local hardware store. Um, just go to Home Depot and buy it by the five gallon butt jug. You don't have to buy this much at a time. They do sell smaller smaller buckets. Um, they usually go for around 10, 15 bucks. Um, this one's about 50, cause it's five gallons. Overall, those were the basic items that you need to make a rug. Now I got a couple other items here that make things a lot easier. And I'm gonna go ahead and go through those one by one. The first thing is a yarn spooler. All right, so this is, what Amazon called a high efficiency yarn spooler, high speed, high speed low drag, um, a, a high speed yarn spooler. Essentially what it does is it's going to turn your yarn into little balls like this. So they're not held in skeins. Some people have some difficulty getting the yarn out of the skein, um, entangled or out of the skein. The yarn spooler does help a lot because it makes it all nice and makes it all nice and round. That's really what narrows down to be. All right, so the next thing you need is a hot glue gun. This really comes into effect when you're backing the rug and getting it cut off the frame. Let's say you're doing the waterfall technique and you're folding the fabric back onto the rug. We need the hot glue gun to glue it down. Plus it makes backing your rugs a lot easier as well. After that, you need spray glue, okay? This is used to get your backing onto the rug. Some people use the original carpet glue to get their backing on, which is more than fine. I just like using the spray glue. I specifically like this Loctite Professional because it sprays in kind of a web and it's easier to control. I don't have to worry about overspray. It doesn't smell terrible. It's actually really not bad. So those were some supplies to back the rug, but what do you actually use on the back? 
Honestly, I just use normal old felt. Nothing crazy, it gets the job done, it looks nice. Um, I, I first started out with black felt. I didn't care for it because it showed every bit of lint and dust. So I moved to this charcoal color and it works just fine. Trimming your rugs is a multi-step process and you need a couple supplies to do it. Not everybody trims their rugs and that's okay. Do you really need to once you start out? No, get a feel for the machine. Work, work through the process. Some of the things that you do in the very beginning of rug making will affect the trimming process now. And I'll get into that in a different video. Some of the basic supplies for trimming your rugs, scissors. I have different ones. I have a favorite pair. I don't know where they went, but they're here somewhere. This is a carpet shaver. I use it when I first begin shaving my rugs. Um, I go across the entire surface of the rug with this to help pull up loose strands, anything else that might be a problem. After I shave it down with the carpet shaver, I use a pair of sheep shears. Okay, what this does for me is it allows me to get the rug nice, level, and flat. I see a lot of people that go in really hard with these things. I don't see the need for it, but you can do that if you want. Now these are incredibly dangerous, so make sure that you're wearing glasses and you're keeping your hands free of the no-no zones. No-no zones. Also, I keep them put away in a box so my kids don't come up here and play with them. And then you have your clippers. All right, so I did not start out with these. I started out with scissors, um, going through every single line and clipping them all out. There are still times where I'll go back to scissors on certain little things where I'm nervous about using the clippers to cut a specific part of the rug. But for the most part, these work really, really well. You can get these on Amazon. Just look up dog clippers and that's exactly what they are. There's a ceramic blade on here that makes clipping through the yarn that much better. Let's not forget about this little guy. This guy here will make your life so much easier. Threading your machine can be a pain in the butt. I've seen people use fishing line. I've seen them use pliers, tweezers, all kinds of stuff. This is a girl's hair extension threader. All right, it's a long threader and it fits right through the needle of the machine very quickly. Yarn falls out of the machine a lot. It's just part of the process and you gotta reload it. So this made my life so much easier getting the yarn in and out. The last couple things that I will suggest you getting when you first get started is a clean paintbrush. You can use compressed air, but a paintbrush works wonders while you're cleaning your tufting gun. Okay, those things move at an incredibly high rate of speed. Uh, the yarn does get dust, um, acrylic dust everywhere, and it gets inside the machine. So you really gotta clean it. Not only that, because it moves at such a high rate of speed, you need to keep it lubricated. I use this three-in-one lubricating oil. I actually use it for my clippers as well and my sheep shears. Uh, it, works, it works great. Before, before I start every rug, I always clean and lubricate my machine. Even sometimes halfway through a rug, I'll stop and lubricate the machine. I hope this was helpful. If there's any specific videos you guys wanna see, drop me a comment and let me know.